right for our friday hangout today we get to hang out with popular ghanaian actor he's also a producer um he does a lot of things he is the ceo of spider d or spider sniper, sniper d yes yeah. sniper d yes he is the ceo and he's into fashion as well well if you see the person i'm talking about then you know what fashion means because he's all about fashion this afternoon and he's been away for a very long time and it's a pleasure to talk to him this afternoon welcome to let's talk entertainment oh thank you doreen how you doing very well and you're looking like um dapper as usual oh you're looking good as well you look like you just arrived because the color is just glittering like yeah. that i'm sure people will be able to tell the difference <laughs> <laughs> but prince i mean we've known you we've been here with you all this while only for us to wake up early this year you were out of the country um have you moved totally to live in the united states or it's just um, a go and come thing uh, well you know as i always do i you know, I love to travel, love to explore, love to, you know, search for other opportunities out there. Uh, mainly, I've not moved, but, uh, you know, I've been going back and forth. But uh, I think this time around, I stayed for a little bit longer. That is how come you all felt like I've relocated. But, you know, family is there, so most often I go, I visit family and I come back, you know, still chasing the Hollywood dream. So, you know, that's mainly why I kept long in the U.S. Has nothing to do with it. Maybe no, it just has nothing to do with migration. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. So aside movies, I can't do any other thing in the US. I can't do the regular job people do. So if it's not movie, then it's nothing. So yeah. Okay. I was, um, aside the movies, is there anything you do? Yeah, I, I mean, um, aside the movies, I do business because you know you can't solely rely on the income that we get from the movies to make a, a living. So. Aside the movies, you know, I do business buying and selling and, you know, I can't really disclose, but I mean, I'm into commerce, buying and selling of, you know, uh, stuff. I just say stuff. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know about the, I mean, the fashion yeah, the bit. Fashion, the clothing, yeah, it's still, hey, I'm still doing it, you know. You know, normally you can't just travel to the U.S. and come back empty-handed. So most often when, when I go, I bring product, I bring stuff. And I'm, I'm also into the, you know, the car business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so we get to have a car very soon. Uh, if you got dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, for the business, I mean, you. I, I remember some time back we spoke. It looks like um, you're more active when it comes to the fashion stuff out there compared to Ghana. Why is that? Um, over there, you know, I was I was in the U.S. I also uh, modeled at the Washington D.C. Fashion Week where. I modeled for Anjori Couture. It was a, you know, it was a big deal. And you know, over there, it's all about fashion. They, they believe in fashion, and they believe, I mean, um, you need to look trendy and look classy and all that. So there are a lot of fashion shows, a lot of fashion programs that one can, you know, adore his or her products. And besides that, you know, I'm also a producer. So whilst in the U.S., um, with God being on my side, I was able to produce two movies together with my Nigerian counterparts. Um, Joseph Benjamin and um, Bayo Lawie. Uh, the first movie we produced is titled American Hustlers. It's a big movie. The budget is running to hundred uh, thousands of dollars. You know, it's big, and we're hoping to premiere in Ghana come March next year, and in Nigeria as well, in London, and you know, all over the world. The Tribesmen is the second one, which I also co-produced with other Nigerians in Maryland, um, uh, DMV, that's um, uh, Washington DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So, I mean, so far, so good. It's, it's been good out there, uh, you know, I've been able to produce two major movies that um, which tend to be a different, show a different side of me because this one is comedy. You know, I've always been playing the villain or playing the tough guy, but this one, yeah, you see me goofing and you see the, the funny aspect of me, so. See you like you know the bad guy in the movies, yeah, and they see you, and they they always say that this guy he's bad, he's yeah, not like I mean, nice and everything. But you've known me for some time now. I'm cool. I mean, I just play my role, and sometimes, you know, when you play the role and it becomes infectious, people tend to believe what you do is who you are. But you know, what I do is not who I am. I mean, it's just acting. All right. Yeah. Well, let me ask this question um, that um. 2017 has been a, a good year for many it has also been a bad year for many especially the movie industry for us we've been asking lots of actors who keep talking about the fact that the movie industry is not doing well to the extent that most of them are not really doing 
movies some of them are running their own businesses um, you are also in this industry 20 year under review what do you make of the movie industry um, I would say 2017 has not you know I was in, in Ghana actually so but I I mean from afar I could see what's going on I would say has not really been fair to the movie industry but trust me 2018 will be good you know when I came down I shot a movie with Messi Johnson Directed by Pascal Amanfo, titled Once Upon a Family, starring myself and Halima Abubakar, Messi Johnson, the young ones Jeffrey, Fela Makafui, Seligali. And I believe, uh, you know, uh, other people too have shot, you know, quite quality movies that from next year going, if we start showing them, if we start premiering them, the movie industry will kick off. And uh, I believe, hopefully, uh, you know, economy wise, next year will be good. Besides, um, I feel we need to educate the fans and the audience who patronize our movie on the new level. Now it's not about DVD anymore. People don't really buy DVDs. People do online streaming. People watch movies on the internet. People watch movies on apps on online. So maybe our marketers and people who sell our movies need to look at that avenue. Because we're not reaching to the audience, not because they lost interest, but because of the DVD. Nobody really buys DVD anymore. You know the technology has gone that far that we need to start looking at other means of you know getting to the audience other means of you know showing our movies so now i see that um, a lot of our producers who started way back with us uh, we can talk of the abdul salams um, we can talk of um, the pascal amanfros um, frank raja the shirley's and you know. it looks like um, they've 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 gone back a bit or they've laid back a bit do you think that um I mean, the industry itself somehow, because things are not really running the way they expect, that's why they've all laid back, and which is, I, I can say that it's also affecting a lot of actors. Yes, because I mean, mainly when you're a producer and you invest money into a movie and you can't get your money back, I mean, you do it one or two, obviously you're going to go bankrupt or you're going to decide to do other stuff because it's not being lucrative to you and, you know, everybody does investment to make money. So I feel maybe... They've gone into hibernation because they feel the movie industry is not really vibrant. But as I said earlier on, next year will be good. Uh, it's looking good for 2018. Personally, I feel that the TV stations are not doing as well. Even though the industry is down, the least you can do is call Prince, call some of the directors. Okay, we want to help you guys grow the industry because it's Ghana. It's, it's nothing more. It's Ghana. So, okay, we have a product. You guys produce this. Let's come together 50-50 because we did a series titled Table of Men. Table of Men was very indigenous by a cosmeter and a big who. It was difficult getting sponsors. They roam all over the place. Finally, TV3 pick it up, but where is it now? Yeah, I, I think I heard a similar yeah. story like that. So you think that maybe you instead of support. You, don't, you don't get the support. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't get the support, the least you can do is maybe do a low budget movie to make some ends meet and get busy. Because when you do a major thing that's supposed to blow, the support is not coming from there. You go to all these companies and outfit and they don't want to support but if it's um, a telenovela they'll get people prime time to show and do adverts and they'll also get beauty pageant they, they get to sponsor by their own sponsor movies let's talk about government here I'm sure most of us are at a point like now we are even able to form associations and even interact with government or I mean the person who is in charge. Do, do you think government is also not doing good enough to support the industry? Um, you see, uh, it would take a lot from the government if the government understands that everything we do is art. When you wake up and you drink water is art. When you have a haircut is art. When you after all the day's job and you put on your TV, who do you see? It's entertainment. You see the newscaster, you see people doing stuff on TV. That's the only way you control yourself after a hard day's work. So if you don't respect that, they won't go anywhere. If the government comes to the realization that the art is the mirror of society and without the art industry, we can't go anywhere, then we start seeing results. Look at Hollywood. People travel to, to London, to New York, just to take a picture because that's what they've sold you. They've projected tourism such that you just want to go stand somewhere around Times Square and take a picture. It didn't happen one day because the government of the United States and other European countries, they, they believe in the arts. They know all we do is art. So if we think maybe art is for dropout people or for people who don't know what to do with their life, then it's, it's, it's appalling. So the government should pay attention. We are not asking them to give individuals money. The structure should be there. 
the structure should be there. They should implement when MPV came into power, according to their manifesto, they are going to build recreational centers, they are going to build theaters and stuff. It's quite early now, so we're watching. Okay. We're watching. Now, let's talk about pay TVs. I mean, recently we heard the launch of Iroko TV here in Ghana, and prior to that, actress Salasi Ibrahim had said that a lot of these pay TVs pay cheap money to these producers and actors and then they just take our movies and air and somehow some way is actually affecting the industry because they don't make money out of it what do you make of it um the whole problem is desperation okay there's no much work going on in the system people need to make ends meet so sometimes when you when you're making decision you make decision based on your stomach not, not on long, longevity you are not making a decision based on posterity it's just your stomach i want to eat so if i want to eat i want to eat now so i don't mind giving it out for a token just to eat so really that's what's going on people need to survive people want to survive so whatever you do to survive yeah it's so it's all about survival now in this system that we are right now mm. yeah all right well, I mean, if we're going to talk about the industry, we'll go on and on and on. But of course, we are looking for it for the best for the industry. And as you said, 2018 will be a better one. So 2018, we're looking forward to see your movies. Yes, um, American Hustlers, uh, produced by me and uh, uh, Joseph Benjamin and Biola, we were shot in the States. Uh, a hilarious movie that talks about life of celebrities outside the comfort zone. And Tribesmen as well, equally goofy, funny movie. And you know, I've done some productions when I came this past uh, weeks, and um, one to look out for is Once Upon a Family, directed by Pascal Amanfo, and um, featuring Mercy Johnson, myself, Sally, McCaffrey, Jeffrey, Halima, and a host of other upcoming, you know, actors and actresses. All right. Well, Prince, the year is coming to an end, and of course, I'm sure you have lots of people out there who would like you to wish them a Merry Christmas, and then, of course, give us the hope of something good in 2018. Um, I want to, you know, say Merry Christmas to everyone in Ghana. I love you guys. You guys are the reason we do what we do. But a big one to my boss, Tornado, Stephen Apia. Yeah, to Ivan Nelson, Ivan Oko, to John, to Majid, to Martha Kuma, who's always fighting me, to all the lovely people. And all I want to say is um, Ghana is our own, you know. We don't have any other place. And um, I saw Akufado put up something about corruption and about people going through trial. Let's not politicize it. In other countries, if you embezzle state funds, if you misappropriate funds, you go through persecution. If you are found culpable, you face the full rigors of the law. Let's learn to be a lawful nation. Let the law take control. I believe if Ghana becomes a very lawful nation, a lot of things will go well. The lawlessness is too much. People just think Ghana belongs to them and they do what they like. But Ghana belongs to every one of us. So. Let the law take its course, and whoever is culpable, let the person go through the process. Yeah, and we'll have a better Ghana. Love you all. See you in 2018. All right, so that was actor Prince David Osei. He says he loves us all. Let's listen to him, and we hope that he doesn't go back to the States, or you're going to go. No, I'm, I'm going to be yeah, I'm going to be traveling, but I won't go and stay as long <laughs> as I did, but I'm going to be going. All right, we will be looking forward to seeing you more often, and thanks so much for talking to us. Pleasure, darling. Thank you.